Hi, I'm Roger Montgomery from Montgomery Investment Management and welcome to this week's Video Insight. Over the last few weeks, we've dismissed the idea that a bubble exists in the market overall. Many have argued the S&P 500's valuation is stretched and they point to the Cape-Shiller ratio being at its second highest level since 1870 as evidence. But we'd count a 25% of the market comprising Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft and Google as demonstrating business economics and growth prospects the likes of which the business world has never seen and could never have predicted. This is not like 1999 when the internet's infrastructure wasn't ready to support large internet companies leveraging its potential. And back in 1999, there were 150 million internet users. Today there are that many in Brazil alone. There are 4.7 billion internet users today, which is still only 59% of the world's population. So not only are these companies highly profitable, but they still have long runways of growth ahead of them. Several prominent market commentators are also suggesting that the presence of speculative bubbles in some segments of the market is a sign we're in the final stages of the bull market. But we've already had many bubbles form and collapse in the last 12 months alone without interrupting the broader market. I draw your attention to the various pockets of insanity last year, such as the bubble in Hertz, Kodak and Nikola stock. These stocks rally between 500 and 1500 percent before collapsing more than 80 percent. As long as the bubbles uh, are occurring in assets that aren't on the balance sheets of systemically important financial institutions, they can occur in isolation and without dragging the rest of the market down and without causing a financial crisis. There is one assumption the bullish argument relies on, however, that the market has been questioning in recent weeks. Will bond rates remain low? It's low bond rates that determine whether the market's valuation is reasonable. If bond rates rise substantially, the market is no longer fair value. Rates are currently far below historic norms, at almost zero, but after an easing of COVID's grip on the global economy, the immense flood of liquidity from central banks during the pandemic could show up in higher inflation. It's this that the market is currently nervous about. Historically, runaway money printing does trigger inflation, and there has indeed been a surge in the supply of money, but COVID-related restrictions and lockdowns have depressed both demand and wages, so inflation has remained subdued. But is it only delayed? That's the really serious question. The US 10-year Treasury break-even rate, however, which is equivalent to inflation expectations for the five years beginning five years from now, has climbed to over 2%. To put that in perspective, this has quadrupled its level a year ago, and the most recent survey of uh, expected changes in inflation, conducted by the University of Michigan, showed inflation expectations jumping from 2.5% in November to 3% for December. Now, we don't propose to suggest rate hikes or a tightening from the US Federal Reserve is likely anytime soon. But investors must keep a close eye on the bond yield curve and watch out for a sustained steepening. If the difference between short-term and long-term rates continues to widen, it heaps more pressure on central banks to buy long-dated bonds in an attempt to keep the yield curve flat. So forget about overvaluation and bubbles. Instead, keep a watch over the yield curve, inflation expectations and the US Federal Reserve's response. Oh, and here's a quick postscript on exactly that topic. The US Federal Reserve's Chairman Jerome Powell gave his testimony before Congress overnight. He again made it abundantly clear that despite hopes a fading pandemic will vastly improve the economy's prospects, the Fed has no plans to start tapering its monthly bond purchases or raising its overnight interest rate target anytime soon. We'll keep an eye on this for you, and you should keep an eye on it yourself, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks for joining us, and please continue, us, continue to follow us on Facebook and Twitter.